Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and horror. Today we will explore the island of Dominia, an island in the Sea of Sorrows, surrounded by huge stone cliffs and known for its notorious sanatorium for the mentally ill. But first, a few brief announcements and clarifications. First, one of my colleagues at the Black Feather, Leandro Zerbinati, released an RPG system of his own creation called Imaginary. The system is simple and easily adapted to any game proposal, and you can purchase his book on the DriveThru RPG website, whose link I'll leave below in the video description. Before we start to explore the Sea of Sorrows, our explorations through the mists took place in the core of Ravenloft and passed through domains that had already been inserted and described in novels, adventures, and mainly in the Ravenloft Gazetteers, books that brought detailed information about the domains and the Dark Lords. Until that moment, I had taken care to feature the Ravenloft setting in my videos, taking into account only official sources. However, in the case of Dominia, and other domains not previously covered by the Ravenloft Gazetteers, I intend to expand on these sources of information. Dominia first appeared in the red box of the Ravenloft camping setting in 1994 and featured a Dark Lord who had appeared as a major character in the Feast of Goblin adventure. After these first appearances, the domain received only mentions in the Domain of Dread campaign setting, but was described in detail in the Bleak House campaign. The domain should have been covered in one of the third edition's gazetteers, focused on the Sea of Sorrows, but unfortunately, White Wolf's license to release books for the setting came to an end, and these books haven't been written. However, the Ravenloft fan community wouldn't let the setting rot in oblivion. The Fraternity of Shadows website, the most well-known and organized site for fans of the setting, has published netbooks that continue the Gazetteer's proposal, exploring in depth and detail the domains of dread. Some of these books explore the Nocturnal Sea, the domain of Sorang, or the Cluster of Zerisha, for example. And for some time now, they have developed a Gazetteer for the Sea of Sorrows. Although the Gazetteer for the Sea of Sorrows is not yet finalized and published as a single book, some of its passages describing some domains have already been published as previews in the Quart of the Raven netbooks. I will also leave the link where you can download the book. The next video about Dominia will be based on the official setting material and the article about Dominia written by Lation Deep Shadow Campbell. The article on Dominia was published as a preview of the Seer of Sorrows Gazetteer, and it's possible that the final text will change when the Gazetteer is finally published. Are you ready? On our journey through the Sea of Sorrows, in search of the whereabouts of Dr. Rudolf von Richten, we had an unfortunate stopover at Blaustein, where we were captured and tortured by the infamous Bluebeard. After he discovered that we were looking for the whereabouts of Dr. Rudolf von Richten, and that we are bound for the island of Dominia as our next destination, the cruel Dark Lord of Blaustein has decided to ensure that we reach our destination and has entrusted us to the care of a sinister vessel as slaves and prisoners. Stripped of our items, we are taken to the ship called Mercy, but cabins do not await us on this ship, as we are forced to enter coffins, whose lids are nailed shut. Through a small opening in the lid of the coffins, we are precariously fed throughout the journey of many days through the Sea of Sorrows, until we finally reach the island of Dominia. Absolute darkness and confinement are our only companions on this journey, and the weight of our tortures began to eat away at our sanity. With no sense of time, 
exhausted and weakened, we barely realize when the ship finally docks. We are lifted out of our coffins to disembark, but blinding daylight is followed by strong hands that grab us and a needle that inject us with some paralyzing substance. With horror, we feel our paralyzed bodies being carried away while we observe the imposing and enormous stone cliffs that surround the island. We are carried and hoisted by an elevating mechanism to the top of the cliffs and taken by carriage into a wallet state. There, we enter the gates of Dr. Heinfroth's home for the mentally ill, and we perceive a large group of people wearing grey robes and masks. They surround our paralyzed bodies, dress us in similar robes, and tie on our face strange masks like the ones they wear. When we regain movement, our exhaustion overcomes us and we pass out. The days that follow are like an endless nightmare, where we alternate between lucidity and despair, with strange moments of lethargy and hallucinations, and terrible therapy sessions that are so traumatizing that we have difficulty remembering clearly. Totally incapable of reacting, or even identifying our own companions from other captors or patients, we are allowed, at least, to explore the surroundings of our new prison. The media is a raven of domain that uses themes of insanity and paranoia and bring them into a context of a sanitarium and asylum for the mentally ill, a trope that has become commonplace for horror, especially considering the real horrors that were common in this kind of institutions in the past. Insanity has always been a common theme for gothic horror, with great authors like Edgar Allan Poe and Howard Phillips Lovecraft bringing to life characters tormented by the gears of their own minds until they are totally surrendered to their madness. The domain goes beyond these classic gothic tropes, and its dehumanizing treatment, the paranoia and control over the patients exercised in this sanatorium, are inspired by more modern works such as 1984 by George Orwell, Fahrenheit 451, by Hay Bradbury, or Brave New World, by Huxley, in addition to the television series The Prisoner. The domain is set in the Renaissance era, although the strange scientific experiments of the cruel doctors of the sanatorium can easily be extrapolated to more culturally advanced eras. Its geography and types of architecture and construction of the sanatorium have an obvious inspiration in the European culture. The domain is not easily situated in terms of cultural reference. Dominia's origins are linked to another domain, in the lands of Gundarak, where Dr. Dacloud Reinfroft maintained his first asylum for the mentally ill and acted as the main ally and servant of the Dark Lord Duke Gundar. With the death of Duke Gundar, Dr. Dacloud Heinfroth, also known as Dr. Dominiani, became Dark Lord of Gundarak for a short time, but did not manage to keep the control over those lands. The mist swallowed him once more to give him his own domain of dread. Initially, the island was completely surrounded by mists, but later it became part of the Sea of Sorrows, appearing at the occidental edge of the map, west of the domain of La Mordia. The climate of Dominia is temperate, and often cold and rainy. The small island in the Sea of Sorrows is sometimes beset by terrible storms, 
and its proximity to the mist border often bring constant fog to the region. The island has a circular shape, and its habitable part is located many feet above the sea level, protected by huge rocky cliffs. Attentive observers will notice that the formation looks like the caldera of a dormant volcano, but whose top has been covered by earth and erosion debris, forming a layer of a fertile soil that also holds some artesian aquifers of potable drinking water. Navigation to the island is very difficult, and any vessel must slow down and approach with caution. The region is taken over by sandbanks and by dangerous and beautiful blood corals, which have a toxin with powerful paralyzing effects. In fact, the only vessel that seems to make frequent trips to the island is the Mercy, a ship owned by Dr. Dominiani and who makes regular trips to the continent in search of new patients. The cliffs that surround the island reach heights of 100 to 500 feet and make approaching the island a challenge. In its lower part, some caves can be glimpsed, and it is believed that some of them have sheltered pirates in the past. Other caves have become home to unknown creatures and predators, but most believe they are not connected. The island had a single port with capacity for a few ships. On docked, all cargo and passengers on ships wishing to go up to the asylum need to go through a cargo lifting mechanism, which lifts cargo and passengers very close to the cliffs until they reach the top. When finally reaching the top of the rocky walls, a traveler is faced with a dense forest of pine trees that are very reminiscent of the haunted forest of the lands of Gundarak. A single well-maintained dirt road traverses the island through the forest, and carriages usually wait after ships arrive to safely convey cargo and passengers to Dr. Heinfroth's home for the mentally ill. Beyond the asylum, the road leads to the other side of the island, to the edge of the cliffs from where unwanted material is dumped in a free fall to be swallowed up by the sea. The imposing sanatorium is the only building on the island and is surrounded by walls with iron spikes and shards of glass in its mensary, protecting both sides of the building. Immediately in its surroundings, some small vegetable gardens and farms, lumber camps and clay pits can be found where a group of patients dressed in grey robes perform labor tasks in a monotonous way. Around each of these places, there is an area with wolf's bane, to try to avoid wolf's attacks on patients. Once within the walls, the building compromises a large open area for picnics and recreation for the patients, and a small cemetery and mausoleum. However, the sanatorium building and its various wings draw the most attention. Although small, the flora and fauna of the island of Dominia are very rich and part of a delicate and balanced ecosystem. The rich soil is extremely fertile and Dr. Dominiani takes advantage of this condition to bring the most exotic species to these lands ensuring a wide variety of herbs and ingredients for his experiments. Some poisonous herbs that are only found in Burka, Kartakas or Forlon are found in the region, and it is said that even a deaf head tree can be found in the woods. The most predominant vegetation is the bitterbark pines, a typical vegetation of the lands of Gundarak that forms the dense forests that cover most of the island. Herbalists say that the bark of these trees has medicinal properties, and that the syrup of its sap, or the incense made with its bark, can help to recover an individual's mental faculties. The island's fauna includes several mammals, such as wild pigs, deer, rabbits and rodents, 
but the island is plagued by wolves. These animals infest the woods and their howls can be heard throughout the night. Always hungry, these animals are a danger to anyone who tries to exploit their woods, and their packs are said to be led by wargs, who demonstrate a ruthless intelligence. The island is also home to several seabirds that nest on these cliffs, such as seagulls, and flocks of unusually large ravens also settle in the region. In addition to the natural horrors, it is said that some monstrosities also lurk on the island. Carnivorous plants and an evil trend are feared by those who roam its woods, and rumor has it that a wild, crazy patient has escaped the asylum and lives in the forest as a wild beast. Those who venture in the surrounding waters must beware the rivers, aquatic creatures that seem to prey among the unwary who enter their waters. The population of the media is composed of patients and members of the hospital staff, but at first glance it is impossible to distinguish who is who. All hospitalized patients and all orderlies at the sanatorium are dressed in the same fashion with grey hooded hopes and gloves, and with a ceramic mask that covers their entire face and which has a smile opening on its mouth. These masks are tightly tied with leather straps so that they are not easily removed by the individual using them, and only staff members know mechanism to easily remove them. On the forehead of this mask there is a number identifying the cell where each inmate is located, and no one uses any names within the asylum, with patients and staff being colored only by the numbers on their foreheads. This garment is part of the treatment applied by Dr. the Clown Heimfroff, and according to him, aims to calm the patients and help them to break the emotional barriers that prevent their correct treatment. By establishing this unified and homogeneous garment between patients and the orderly, the sense of personal identity that is harmful to the treatment is eliminated, facilitating the reconditioning of patients. Even visitors are required to wear such garments if they gain admittance to the property, and as a result, it is never possible to know in each group of people who there are patients or members of the sanitarium staff, positioned there to carefully observe and monitor the events. There are a few exceptions to this attire, which distinguish members of the local medical staff. Dr. Dominiani is never seen in these robes, which, according to the head of the asylum's medical team, serves for the patients to recognize his position of authority and allows him to administer the correct treatment. The crew of the Mercy ship is not required to wear such garments, but Captain Baker and his sailors generally remain on the ship, not staying long on the sanatorium grounds. There are some other doctors on the team responsible for leading and managing some wards of the asylum and they are assigned robes of different colors. Their names are not known by the patients, who refer to them only as Dr. Green, Dr. Blue, Dr. Brown, Dr. Black and Dr. White. The population of inmates of the asylum is mostly human, and these make up for about three quarters of the patients. The asylum also receives individuals from the most diverse humanoid races, and a large population of Caribans has loomed in its cells, giving the sad habit of some families that reject these deformed individuals, handing them over to the asylum's care, regardless of the state of their sanity. The truth is that the asylum has also become a place where the rejected and unwanted are taken to suffer away from the eyes of society. Rumor has it that this has even been the fate of some political prisoners, 
people who need to disappear from the public eye, at least until their minds are too muddled to become a threat to their enemies. Most of the patient population is made up of adults, although some children can also be found in the facilities. Some were sent by the families to the asylum because their existence was a cause of scandal or embarrassment for the families, and others were born on the islands to female patients who were hospitalized while pregnant. Dr. Dominiani takes great care of these children, as they represent a unique opportunity for his studies. These innocent and malleable minds are ready to be molded and manipulated and can be the source of great knowledge and learning. The patients interned here come from different nationalities and ethnicities, and some come from distant lands, like other nomads from the Nightmare Lands, from the icy lands of Vorostokov, or even descendants of the Tani, the people who inhabited the vanished land of Blutspur. As a result, a multitude of language and cultures can be found in the asylum. Out of the treatment imposed by Dr. Dominiani, quickly try to suppress any trace of individuality in these patients. The main language spoken in Dominia, especially among the medical staff, is the Lukta language, the original language of the domain of Gundarak, the homeland of Dr. Heimfroff and where he first established his asylum for the mentally ill. Although all patients are dressed identically, they are distributed in wards according to their health condition. Ward 1 is led by Dr. Green and houses non-violent patients, often consistent of lost ones, people who are incapacitated by a major mental trauma, or people in a catatonic state. War 2 is led by Dr. Bloom, and it houses patients who have their reason and intellect impaired by some injury or disability, as well as most of the Calibans interned in the institution. War 3 is led by Dr. White, and houses patients who are mentally capable and who have overcome the lethargy of trauma, but are still making progress in their treatment. The ward also shelters people who are delirious or who go through hallucinations and other process of disconnection with reality. Many of the patients claim to be tormented by invisible spirits or forces that haunt them. Lastly, Ward 4 is led by Dr. Black and houses the institution's most dangerous and violent patients. While not commanding a specific war, Dr. Brown is responsible for re-education and conditioning experiments, and works to try to readjust patients to social life. Rumor has it that there is or was a Ward Zero, which housed only patients of special interest to Dr. Dominiani, but no one has ever found proof of its existence. The island has no formal government, but the sanatorium's entire staff obeyed the orders of its founder and owner, Dr. Da Clown Heimfroff, also known by the alias of Dr. Dominiani. In addition to him, the doctors, known for the colors of their robes, form a board and council of the clinical staff and exercise authority over the other orderlies in their wards and areas of activity. These doctors are also responsible for conducting various administrative activities on the island, organizing their accounting, supplies, security, and diplomatic relations, and also for establishing health, educational, and technological agreements with other institutions in the land of the mists. The rules of the mental asylum are strict and determined by Dr. De Cloud. Visitors or foreigners who violate these rules are immediately expelled from the island and deported to their homelands. Patients who commit violent acts are immediately relocated to the dreaded Ward 4, 
but they are locked up with other patients of violent and dangerous temperaments and subjected to treatments specific for their condition. Crimes committed by patients are judged through the atria, courts formed by doctors, with one of them appointed as judge, where they emulate the legal process that exists in the land of origin of the accused patients. This peculiar process of crime, judgment and punishment was portrayed by the lawyer Gerard Lefic, who came from Burka at the request of one of his clients to bring evidence about his case and wrote a book about the lives of patients in Dominion, called The Refuge. The book brought great fame to Dr. Heinfroth and was adapted into a play of the same name, doing much to spread Dr. Dominiani's fame as one of the leading specialists in the field. The only crimes committed in Dominion that are not tried in this way are those committed aboard the vessel Mercy, the only vessel that has a flag and port of Dominia as its home base is under the authority of Captain Baikor, who can analyze, judge and punish the behavior of the crew and the crimes committed on his vessel. Dominia's economy is completely centered on the activities of Dr. Heinz Roth's home for the mentally ill, and the institution receives considerable amounts for the treatment of those admitted to its facilities. Sanitary agreements with the Fellowship Sherrit Clinic from Arteria Bay in Darkon and the Granheim Sanatorium in La Morgia ensure a constant influx of patients and it's not uncommon for some well-to-do families to send to the clinic for treatment their members who are tormented or who may have become unwanted or embarrassing. In addition to medical activity, some of the treatment therapies involve the use of patients in cultivation and gardening activities, clay extraction for the manufacture of utensils and bricks, or even to act as lumberjacks and carpenters. All these activities aim only to meet the demands for the materials on the island. The only ship that makes regular routes to the islands is the Mercy, which is always on the stretch between Dominia and the port of Martyria Bay. Time passes, and night and day are confused in this real nightmare into which we were thrown by the evil Captain Bluebeard. Our bodies are slowly recovering from the torture and the strenuous journey by ship to this destination but we are separated and unable to communicate with anyone we know, with masks strapped to our faces and forced to wear strange grey robes, we cannot distinguish between patients and staffs. Our attempts to argue and converse with others around us are fruitless, and some even suggest that we are having delusions as we have been here for many years. At night, we are overcome by a dreaded sleep and lethargy, perhaps a mystical or drug effect. We have few and confusing memories of being subjected to horrendous treatments during this period, and we wake up even more weakened and with difficulties in thinking. In this state of tormented delirium, we mention our quest to find Dr. Van Richten and we see how this seems to alarm some of the hooded masqueraders around us. That night, instead of an induced sleep, we are taken to a large hall where a feast awaits us. On the table before us is the leader of the asylum, Dr. the Clown Heinfroth, who invites us to dinner. Forgive me for the treatment you received so far but you were sent to our sanatorium by Lord Raoul Morel as dangerous patients suffering from murderous delusions. Obviously, some mistake must have occurred, and I would like to compensate you for this misfortune. Tell me, my guests, why have you come to the island of Dominia, and how can I help you? 
the hope of deliverance warms our heart for a moment, but we are still wary about our host. Sensing our hesitation, he promptly offers to calm us down, reveals his resume as an alienist and psychiatrist, as well as the history of his renowned facility. Join us, subscribe to the channel, and let's unravel the history of Dominia.